Uber's Dialogue. So this is a lecture by me, Andrew Thomas, in the One School for All course at Estoril University College for my wonderful international students that I will meet on Tuesday, the 2nd of November 2021. Um, so we're going into a different mode now with more individually based, more relational um, philosophy rather than um, politically oriented. And um, the reason I want to talk about Buber is that he does something a little bit similar to what we saw happened with um, Scott in Seeing Like a State. And you remember we went from this top down perspective to a, um, a, a street level perspective when we played those two games. And we talked about the consequences of different kinds of perspectives on the classroom and how it's necessary to take the top-down perspective sometimes, but we have to um, take a number of compromises when we do so. Buber's got something similar, but um, his philosophy is working at an existential level. Um, he's talking about um, what is the nature of being alive, being a human in, in society, in, in relationship. Um, and it's uh, and it's also mystical to a certain extent, so it's religiously informed. Um, I'll go in a little bit more into that. Um, and, um, and and what we're using this in the course for is to talk about communication as a contrast to assessment, or um, as assessment as a form of communication, and what are the consequences of of that form of communication. Um, a little bit of background on on Buber. Um, he was born into a, an Orthodox Jewish family. Um, in 1878 um, in Vienna. Um, he was kind of like the best Erasmus student ever in the sense of he really um, he really traveled in in Europe um, and um, ended up in, in, in Jerusalem. Um, although he was um, born into uh, an Orthodox family he was um, he he soon um, threw that off and then embraced it again in, in, in adult life um, and in the meantime had read a lot of, of philosophers but the point is um, I, the reason I say his Erasmus family he um, he soon moved after the age of about three after his parents divorce he um, he moved to Ukraine um, and um, and moved into his uh, yeah Lviv in um, Ukraine uh, Ukraine and um, and then moved back to his father's house as a young teenager and then soon um, moved to um, Vienna again um, and and for um, a lot of his young adult life he um, took studies in Vienna um, Leipzig and Zurich Berlin um, and 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 both studied and eventually taught. Um, working with um, uh, working with ed um, Jewish education, education for um, uh, for Jewish people, um, in um, in right through the 1920s um, in Heppenheim and Bergstrasse um, until in 1930 he um, gained a um, you know, traveling all over the place. 1930 gained a professorship in pra Frankfurt. Um, and um, uh, from which he either resigned or was dismissed in about 1933 when he um, saw what Hitler was doing in Germany. Um, eventually he um, he just up and up and left but by this time he had um, become um, something of a, a world um, philosophical figure and um, and although he was based in Jerusalem um, and he, he became a Zionist and, and, and recommended the return to Jerusalem for, for Jews um, in, um, for the rest of his life um, he was also traveling around the world um, and, um, and and collaborated and worked with uh, and, and, and discussed things with a, a wide variety of philosophers. became a became a um, an important figure for Jewish philosophy, but also for, for philosophy in general. Famously, he was a big inspiration for um, Levinas, the French Jewish philosopher. And then he died in 1965. So we we've got some um, we've got two major texts, um, I and Thou and Between Man and Man, which we've got on our reading list. Um, but the central idea that I want, that, that people associate with, um, with Buber, and which I, I want you to, to, um, to understand, is this distinction between um, talking about something and talking to somebody. So imagine um, a cat is talking about me. Um, as far as the cat is concerned, it doesn't matter really who the cat is talking to, so long as it's not talking to me. The, talk, the cat is talking about me. 
maybe talking to you. Um, and um, and talk, and the cat is talking trash and taking and making terrible rumors about um, the terrible things I um, I get up to in Frederick Star um, about what I do in my spare time. Um, and as far as the cat is concerned, I am an object in the cat's world. I am a him. It does not refer to me as you. It refers to me as him. Um, so yes, I'm an object in the cat's world. But imagine then the cat turns to me, or the cat approaches me, um, and and starts talking to me. To me, I am um, then no longer a um, a part of the cat's world, not the part of the um, a member of the things, um, the the world of things that the cat refers to. I am a you. Uh, the cat is talking to me, but not about me. So I'm no longer part of the cat's referential world. And um, so there's a there's a you me. And what happens? What we put in the speech bubble, what we talk about, um, will be will be other things. Um, and it really doesn't matter whether it's we talk about fish or dogs or lasagna or the demise of humanity. Um, the point is the conversation will be about those things. Um, but I can't be captured by that conversation. As long as we start talking about me, I can then reply to that. Uh, and we can talk about me, but I am. Um, but the cat can no longer describe me in that way because um, um, because I can then talk back and express things and bring new data to the conversation. That I will be a different person at the end of that conversation as I was at the beginning. So I am, um, even if we do talk about me, I am not a member of the cat's world because I'm dynamic. I'm changing. You can't talk about somebody who is in the middle of cha of, the, of change. So uh, the point is for Booba, we are either conversation partners, an IU relationship, or we are um, conversation objects, what we talk about in the conversation. And, um, and, and if we insist on talking about me, but, um, but without taking um, consideration of the fact that I'm talking back, we would just have to end that conversation, then the cat is just holding a monologue about me. So it would no longer be a dialogue. So these, this is the essential decision. Are we, is, is a person a, a you, an I you in a dialogue, or an it, a, a thing, um, or a he, or a she? It's not even objectifying, it's just referring to, um, is the person part of the referential world that we are referring to, or part of the um, dialogue which together in the conversation constructs that referential world, um, but is not part of it? Okay, so why is this relevant for us? When I'm filling in a questionnaire, when I'm um, when I'm filling in some kind of mapping or screening um, data, um, I am talking to that questionnaire. I am um, I'm and there is there is a conversation going in some way. I'm using communication. It looks like an IU conversation in many ways, but of course the person who is listening to that conversation, to the person who is reading the questionnaire that I fill in, um, is asking who who I am is talking about me, is trying to prepare some kind of conversation about me. Um, and in order to be a rigorous and scientific, questionnaires do have to be um, administered by um, by somebody who specifically is uninterested in the IU conversation. It has to be scientific and cold and, um, and disinterested, um, impartial. And therefore, um, ideally, it would, or very often, it is administered by the person who did not actually write the questionnaire. So one person will, will, will ask the questions, put the questions on the questionnaire, um, but they are the people who are wanting to describe the people who take the questionnaire. So somebody else will then administer that questionnaire to a third person who fills in that questionnaire. So there's a series of different roles. And even though I may be talking to the person who um, administers the questionnaire, the person who wrote the questionnaire or did, ordered the questionnaire they are talking about me, not to me. Otherwise, it's just um, um, it's just a structured conversation. Um, so Martin Buber would then say, and, and in Martin Buber's spirit, we would we would perhaps say, um, people who take questionnaires are an object in the referential world of the people who administer the questionnaires. They are not a you. They are um, they are not in relationship with. Um, the person who orders the questionnaire. There is there is a shift from relationship to discussing um, somebody in our referential world. Now, 
Booba is very morally loaded. Um, I would want to say that you know all of these things are something that we need to do. All of these kinds of conversation are something we need to know. Um, we need to do, but perhaps we need to be aware of um, what kind of conversation we're doing um, and when we are shifting between them. Um, but for Booba, the I-thou relationship is the ethical relationship. The I-it relationship is maybe the organisation or, or the or the bureaucratic relationship. So there is a there is a morally loaded. Um, distinction here, but we don't have to accept that morality. We need to think it through and wonder whether it's um, whether it's um, good moral morals or not. And we want to, and we need do need to know the practical consequences of when we're talking to someone and when we're talking about someone. And because at the end of the day, as teachers, we are in relationship with our pupils, whether we like it or not. But um, but we also need to be aware who they are and have knowledge about them as well as conversation with them.